from the studios of TV Grace International. Here are the ineffable words of God. The Gospel of Grace on the lips of the man Christ Jesus. Abba Father, We have a glorious message, a glorious conference. As always, isn't it? As always, and it is found. The first verse that we are going to use is in first letter. To Timothy chapter 1. Let's all look for it. Timothy, verse 11. There is a word there that catches my attention. And it is necessary. Those who take notes, I would like them to take notes. I wrote nine steps here. Look how simple they are. Nine little steps that I want to talk about tonight. They are well organized. And you can do the same if you write them down. The theme. The theme is the glorious gospel, also known as the kingdom of God. Also known, say, as the kingdom of God. In other words, the gospel given to Paul was the explanation of the kingdom of God here on earth. And I will prove to you why. Verse 11 says, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust. Notice that the gospel was entrusted to Paul. It was not to the 11 apostles. It was not entrusted to anyone else. In fact, Christ did not even preach it. Christ hid it in the days of his flesh. When he lived here, he said, I have many things to tell you, but you will not be able to bear them, so I will not tell you. And if he said, I have many things, many things are many things. Now he was three years with the apostles and told them, I still have a lot to tell you. Look, in three years I have talked to you and I have a lot to tell you, but you are not going to stand it. Because it was the natural mind and they were not going to understand it. Neither Peter nor any of the apostles were going to understand it. Therefore, it is necessary for you to know that when he says that it has been entrusted to me. Because he is clear, he says, Peter was entrusted with the gospel of the circumcision, but to me. Say to me. Yes, the apostle Paul makes a difference. Do you understand what a difference is? Look, they were given that and I was given this. The gospel that was given to Paul is truly glorious. In other words, when you discover it, you enter into a glory. Your life changes. God's glory begins to work in your life and you see changes everywhere. Because it is a gospel of glory. Now the other gospel, the other gospel had no glory. But this one, this one. Paul says that this glorious gospel is the kingdom of God. It means that for you to inherit the kingdom of God, you have to go to Paul. Let's look at Acts chapter 20 verse 24 so that you can see that Paul calls it the kingdom of God. Acts, second biblical verse, you can write it down. It says chapter 20, Acts 20 verse 24. See what it says, but none of these things move me. Neither count my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The gospel of what? Verse 25, And indeed now I know that you all among whom I have gone preaching, what? The kingdom of what? The kingdom of God will see my face no more. I mean, the kingdom of God and the gospel of grace are synonymous. It's the same thing, isn't it? So if you want to enter the kingdom of God, we open the doors for you. It is known that the kingdom of God possesses a key. Peter had the key to the kingdom of God before the cross, which was law, Moses, curse. However, after the cross, the key was chosen by Paul. And then if you want to enter the kingdom, you read the 14 epistles of Paul, which is the gospel of grace, and you enter the kingdom of God. Unless you want to enter paradise. To enter paradise, you have to die. 
Now when the Bible says, those who practice such things do not inherit the kingdom. It means that he does not inherit the gospel of Paul, which is the kingdom of God. There are people who, when they read the Bible, say, look, drunkards do not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Well, sure, imagine a drunkard saying, I am reigning in life and it goes sideways, for it cannot inherit. <laughs> but the gospel of God comes and sets it straight. Hey, boy, don't drink so much that you'll die. You can lose your liver or you can crash while driving. Do you see then the kingdom of God is the gospel of grace. Say the kingdom of God is the gospel that Paul preaches. How many are in that realm? All of you who have been enlightened are in the kingdom of God. Hey, welcome to the kingdom of God. You understood that clearly? That's clear there in those who I have spent preaching the kingdom of God. All right, now let's look at the second letter to the Corinthians to see the other gospel. Then it says chapter 3 of 2 Corinthians. Talking, talking about, about the old ministry. Verse 9, 3, 9. For if the ministry of condemnation had glory. Notice Paul says the glorious gospel. Now that ministry of Moses and the 11 apostles before Christ died had a certain glory. Well, it was a glory that healed the sick. Healed the sick was a glory for the flesh. For the flesh. And it says the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Hello? So this is a gospel of permanent glory. That glory perished when Christ died on the cross of Calvary. It ended there. Then Christ rose again and a new glorious gospel began. People don't know that. That's why they are entangled, because they do not know that after the cross is that the party begins, not before. What is written before had glory, but it has no more. It has run out of glory. It is like a battery that loses its strength and is still a battery, but without, without load. Imagine it doesn't even turn on a radio. First letter to Timothy 1, chapter 1. Look at the importance of that verse. Verse 16, look, the detail. This has never been said before in history. You come to hear it here for the first time. I have to be clear because no one knew about this. And I am communicating this to you today so that you take it out of here and say, look what I learned tonight. No one knew. Peter did not know. The apostles did not know. Now notice what verse 16 says. Paul spoke of him in this way. However, for this reason I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show. Paul is speaking that in me first Jesus Christ might show. It means there was no other who had received this. Look, the first I obtained mercy as a pattern to those who are going to believe in him for everlasting life. It means that Paul was the first. Sometimes you hear people talking nonsense. That the Torah, that you have to go to the Jews to be saved. Jewish. If God first revealed this to the apostle Paul who was a true Jew. A true Pharisee. But... Look, Jesus Christ did not reveal it to Mary. Mary knew nothing about it. Nor Joseph, nor the apostles, no one. Jesus Christ sought out a criminal named Saul of Tarsus, Paul, who persecuted Christians. And then he comes, converts him, calls him and says to him, Paul, you will be the first in history to whom I will show all my mercy, all my clemency. I choose you to show all that true blessing means.
Listen, I'm going to stay there. I'm going to put it this way. I'm going to put it this other way because you've never heard this before. And I have to glory in this because this is the revelation that God has given me. This is what, as an edificator, do you not see that you, the church of Jesus Christ all over the world, you, not me, have said, you are the apostle, you are the other, you are the edificator, you are the ruler of the Gentiles. Well, God has to give me material to prove you. It is true because I have never heard it before. Hey, look at what Paul says. Hey, for those who oppose it out there, he says, look, for this reason I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ, the first, he was the first, but Apostle Paul came as an abortifacient. First there was Peter, there were the 12 apostles. Paul appeared later, later, much later he appeared. Moreover, on the day of Pentecost with Peter, the church had already begun. They had about 10,000 members already. There were a lot of so-called Christians. But of all those Christians, God had not yet revealed his wonderful gospel because he had hidden it to reveal it to a man. God works with men. God chooses men. God is not going to talk to anyone. He chooses a man, a human being, similar to the passions of Elijah, and he chooses him. And woe betide anyone who messes with that man. And God chose Paul, a criminal, a man who killed Esteban. And he said to Paul, you are the first to whom I will show all my mercy. That is why he was killed in Rome. That is why the apostles became jealous of him. The apostles had him killed in Rome. They are. And I from here, from this pulpit, I the builder say that those apostles were criminals. They were jealous of him and had him killed in Rome. They fasted and prayed. They fasted until they put him to death. <laughs> Apostle, but to accuse the apostles is a danger. It is a danger to him who has no revelation. But the mystery of iniquity is a mystery that no one knows. The mystery of iniquity was revealed to us. What does it mean? That iniquity took place with those 11 men that God chose. God predestined it this way. So Paul was the first. The first. What does it mean first? That is why. That's why he says, look, I... Well, let's see it right there in. Let's go to the first letter to the Corinthians. Let's go back again. First letter to the... Corinthians 15.10. That is why Paul speaks this way. I rejoice in this glory. This is my pay. This is the only thing that is mine. Imagine... This is the glory that I, that is why I, this is what gives me courage. This is my medicine. This is the medicine that keeps me at airports, walking from hotel to hotel, trying different pillows, different mattresses, different bathrooms, soaps, and so on. Trying different seasonings, and sometimes I get certain things in my body and I get healthy, but it comes back and gives me something else. Yes, I had this temper, didn't I, last week? Well, I was cured of it, but now I got it again. <laughs> because weather changes do that to me. But, hey, but Paul says, he says, even our lives we lay down for this gospel. That's right. 1510, look what it says. I want everybody to have that verse. Note takers, please, first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 10. 
it says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, speaking of the apostles. Why do I know it refers to the apostles? Because of verse 9, look what it says. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God, but by the grace, verse 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Hey, that's beautiful, isn't it? Hey, that's why he says the apostles, okay, I arrived at the end, so what? So what? Right? Ah, I'm going to give you a lesson in English, so what? So what? I came in last, but I've done more than all of them. Hey, you know, Paul was humble, but when he had to speak clearly, he did. I've done more than all of them. That's just the way it is. They have done nothing. I, have, I came in last, but I have done more than all of them. That's right. Hey, and then he says, let's go now to Galatians chapter 1. He says, this he received personally from JC of JC. Do you know who JC is? JC. In English, JC, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He says he received it personally from him. Galatians chapter 1. It is good for you to know this so that you can defend yourself when the unlearned are against you. When that bunch of ignorant people out there call you and tell you that you are in a wrong sect. That they are deceiving you. That they are brainwashing you. Well, they have washed it very well and that is what you need too. They wash it with pure Bible. It is written there. Look what it says in chapter 1, verse 11. There we are all. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. Verse 12. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation from whom? From J.C., from Jesus Christ. Look, when you convert to a religion, someone brought you to it. Someone converted you. And if you are taken by a Baptist, you will also become a Baptist. And if you are taken by a Pentecostal, you become a Pentecostal. And if a Mormon takes you, you become a Mormon. And if a Seventh-day Adventist takes you, it happens the same way because you are the person someone took you. What occurs? Paul appears and says, Look, Jesus Christ appeared to me personally, so I am a disciple of him already resurrected. He did not go up to Jerusalem for Peter to tell him, look, Paul, this is so, this is so, this is so. That's why they were jealous. Because they were the authorities and everyone who arrived. They had to report to Peter, to John, to James. But what happened? Paul did not report. They said, hey, what's the matter with this guy that they say got blind over there on the way to Damascus? And Ananias told us that he hid over there because the light that gave him took away his sight and he is blind? And then, well, Ananias says, look, I know, I know it is true. I prayed for him and he regained his sight. But he went into a mountain there in Arabia where Moses received the law, where he received the boards. That madman is in there. But there Jesus Christ appeared to him. And then he said to him, Paul, the gospel that I am going to reveal to you, look, the apostles are not going to understand you. Possibly even your life is in danger because you are going to speak strangely. This is a glorious, glory-giving gospel. It is a gospel for the Spirit. Notice that you are not going to be able to baptize the Gentiles. That is why he says, Christ did not send me to baptize. He said, don't baptize. For baptism is a shadow of what I do now in the Spirit. And then Paul asked him, then there is no water baptism? He said, no. That's why John the Baptist said, it is necessary for me to decrease. The one who baptized in water said, I am diminished. And he grew up because I am risen, I am grown up. You cannot baptize in water. But how am I going to convince the apostles of this? Well, it's not going to be easy. They're going to make it hard for you. But try to establish a foundation. 
because you are going to write a foundation and it is up to someone else to build. At the end of the trumpet will come one, which I will choose to explain what you are going to leave codified there. I will be in charge of blinding the understanding of the whole world so that no one will understand it for 2,000 years. But in the end, I will find a man and I will reveal it to him. That's right. That's why in chapter 1, verse 1, look what it says. Paul, an apostle, not sent from men nor through human agency, but through Jesus Christ and God. It means that Paul was chosen, but I have to say, as Paul says, Galatians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, an apostle, not sent from men nor through human agency, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Well then, it is very important to understand that this gospel shares nothing with the law. It does not walk with the law. Look what 18.13, look what it says. Well, the 12th says, And when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul. Who rose up against Paul? The Jews and their opposition towards him persist even to this day. These Messianic Jews who lack knowledge of the Bible and are completely ignorant once again desire to position themselves superior to us. Well, Jews don't like the grace. That's why these Jews opposed Paul, look, and brought him to the judgment seat saying, look how they accuse Paul. This fellow persuades men to worship God contrary to the law. Hello? Hey, I want to be accused of that. Jose Luis persuades Growing in Grace Ministries to serve God against the law. Say, against the law. Well, if Paul received accusations for that, I would like to be accused as well. And you, would you like to be accused of that? Well, if you want to stand tall in the kingdom of God, you'd better be accused of something. Don't be so meek that because of this you are not accused of anything. Look for a little bit of persecution. Don't be so decent. You want to love so much that you love more than God and never speak ill of you. Hey, it seems that you have not spoken. You have not identified yourself. Identify yourself. I am of grace. I am one of the blessed. To see if it gives you a little persecution so that you can participate in this glory. Now look, also what Paul was doing. These Jews don't seem to have read the Bible. Look, chapter 21 of Acts has a verse which is 21 verse 21. Twenty-one, twenty-one. are we all there? They complaining against Paul said to him, but they have been informed about you that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. What was Paul doing? Taught the Jews to what? And you know what these Jews are doing there in the 10th, 80th? They say, no, hello, Moses is the boss here. The Torah must be honored. We must return to the tribe of this one and that one. We must not return to any tribe. Hey, apostate of Moses. Apostate from the law of Moses, that does not help you. That is a ministry of death and curse. No Jew has anything to communicate to me. Rather, I have to communicate. They must come here to participate in the kingdom of God because they are outside the kingdom of God. Look at what it says in chapter 13, verse 32. Paul was speaking here. This is Paul. It says. Well, let's read the verse. Verse 30 to 32. It says, but God raised him from the dead. He was seen for many days by those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses to the people. 
And we declare to you glad tidings that promise which was made to the fathers. That is to say that our fathers, the Jews, the promise that was made to them is found in the gospel of grace. They have to come this way. We don't have to go there. They have to come here because of the promises made to their parents. To all the people of Israel is the gospel revealed to the Apostle Paul. It says it clearly there. That is why we have to apostatize from Moses. Pastor, but the Bible talks a lot about Moses. I would have to tear out all the pages and I would be left without a Bible. No, don't tear them off. Leave them there, but don't listen to Moses. Well, that gospel of Paul, let's go to Romans chapter, chapter 1. Romans now, let's go to Rome. Chapter 1, verse 1. Look at the first thing it says about this gospel. The gospel given to Paul only to... Paul. It says... Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of whom? Which he promised before through his prophets in the holy what? It means that the gospel revealed to Paul was the one promised to them. The prophets spoke of it. Isaiah spoke of this gospel. Now this gospel... Only the gospel of Paul. You have to be specific because people mix it up with the gospel of the apostles. You cannot make that mistake, blessed. Paul's gospel went to him, to me, to me. I was set apart for this gospel. It says that that gospel is the only gospel that God is going to use to judge things now. When the Lord shall appear with his people and transform our bodies in the body and the likeness of his glory. Hey, blessed, do you know what that is? With a glorified body here on earth. I'm crazy to put on that suit. Hey, do you know what it's like to walk here? Not over there in the sky? No, in this heaven, because this is part of heaven. This is the first heaven, there is the second heaven, and the third heaven. Now this gospel is the only one. That's why you have to know the gospel of the 14 epistles, because it's the only one that God is going to use. Apostate from the rest of the Bible. Well, Paul, our apostle, says that you apostatize from Moses and serve God apart from the law. Then it says, Romans chapter 2, verse 16, this is what God is going to use. Look at what God is going to use to judge everything. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to what? And why does he say according to my gospel and not according to the gospel? Because someone may think that he is talking about the gospel of the apostles. Then it is necessary for him to be precise according to my, the one that was revealed to me, I the first. And look also what it says, what chapter 16 says, which is the only gospel that confirms. Sixteen twenty five. Sixteen. Romans sixteen verse twenty five says, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Now to him that is of power to establish. Notice that Paul does not say, I am. He says, one will come who will use the gospel that I left written. He refers to, look, now to him that is. You could put it over there. And to the one who can confirm us. Jose Luis de Jesus, according to my gospel. It is not to the one who wants to, it is to the one who can. Because there are many who want to. But it says that there is one who can. That God calls him and says to him. I give you authority to confirm my gospel. So it was not Paul. Paul says look I wrote it. But to the one who can confirm you. 
according to my, they are going to use my gospel to confirm the church. And I didn't say that. 22 nations say that I am the one who can confirm. There are some who try to imitate me and talk like me, trying to copy me, but they don't even confirm themselves. And there's another thing about this gospel, and that is that if you go out of it, it does not bear fruit. Look, quite a few people have left here in the 14 years that we have been here. For my benefit, they are gone for me to learn that they are not all. And that there are people who serve their belly, and they leave here and they have said, I am going to open my own church, and they take the addresses of a lot of people. But look, angels start, pa, pa, pa. No one, look, no other church has been built here. Nobody goes out from here to open a church they can't. Do you know why? Because I do not give them permission. <laughs> they think, hey, there are some people who are very closed-minded. Notice that there are some. Hey, he who does not think is like an animal. Notice according to their belief after death, they are destined to suffer in a fiery hell where a burning flame tortures them. However, a spirit does not burn. What is consumed is the physical body and once life ceases. Observe their mentality. If in death one is doomed to hell, what will they suffer if the spirits themselves are not afflicted by agony's flaming touch? Get to thinking about it, blessed one. What happens is that the images that exist of it, the superstition and tradition, shows you a fire like that, and people screaming. And to hell with such a trident. <laughs> and all of that is embedded in people's minds. That is why they must come to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is where the gospel of grace is preached. There it is. Say the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Say, I serve a glorious gospel. The gospel we preach here is glorious. Check it out. Scrutinize that there is no spirit of fear here. There is a spirit of relaxation here. Haven't you noticed the relaxation on people's faces? For the spirit he has given us is a spirit of love, of power, and of self-dominion. So this is a glorious gospel. Say glorious. That is why we go from glory to glory because a glorious gospel does that. So blessed greetings to all of you. I love you. Blessed greet your brother.